All right, welcome everybody. I am Alan Noon with Epic Games, and I am here today to tell you about chaos. In this session, we'll quickly answer the question, what is chaos? We'll have a look at the legacy destruction system that was in Unreal, excuse me, Unreal Engine for a number of years. Uh, we'll take a look at destruction moving forward. What were the kinds of things that we wanted out of a new destruction system? We'll take a look at the chaos demo that we put together for you. And then we'll go over the key concepts of working with the new destruction system while we do a little bit of a workflow overview. And if we have time, well, we'll do Q&A off to the side at the end. Okay, so what is chaos? So chaos is Unreal Engine's new physics system that we're working on at the moment. It will ultimately replace PhysX. So top to bottom, everything will be chaos. That sounds funny when you say it. Um, but yes, a preview will be available in 423. And the new physics system is absolutely awesome at destruction. So today, that's the part that we're focusing on. The initial drop, I'll say, of chaos is uh, going to be focused on the destruction aspect. So anytime I mention chaos during this presentation, I'm talking about destruction. Okay, so let's go over the destruction as it exists in Unreal Engine today. So it's been there for a number of years and it provided the facility to create destruction at a basic level right within the editor. So you could select an asset, typically a static mesh, right click and create a destructible asset. And it will allow you to crumble things, you can apply a uh, particle system to it, a sound effect, and um, you had simple interior and exterior mapping of materials. And this is well and good. If you needed to break something in the engine, you could do it pretty quick. So some of the things that we wanted to improve on, if you wanted to do more complex destruction in the engine, you had to go external. You had to go out to a DCC app, such as 3ds Max or Maya with a suite of plugins, or there was a dedicated application where you could author these higher levels of destruction. But of course, that makes the iteration loop pretty slow, right? Because you're constantly authoring, exporting, testing, going back through over and over again. And it was based on a third party API. So we didn't really have a lot of ability here at Epic to modify and make improvements and bug fixes and, and what have you. So what did we want out of a new destruction system? So yeah, iteration time. We wanted to keep people within Unreal Engine at all times. That just like speeds up the loop faster and faster and faster. Make a change, view it, make a change, view it. We wanted to support destruction at various scales from human scale to building scale to entire city blocks. Niagara is our new particle system, and we wanted very tight integration with Niagara as well. You can do some pretty amazing things with Niagara, so we believe that's how you're gonna really be able to take your destruction to the next level. Non-convex collision. Collision's always a sort of a sticky issue. All of my artist friends that have had to author collision shells for years know what an issue that is. So having a way to automate that and do non-convex collision was a big deal. Now this is the one that I'm most interested in, Meaningful gameplay ramifications. So previously, when you destroyed something and the rubble came down, it did not affect your gameplay in a meaningful way. Meaning, a giant let's say a giant chunk of debris falls on the ground, your AI would not know how to react to that. It wouldn't know what to do. It could get stuck on it, walk through it, so on and so forth. So what we want to do with Chaos is have the ability to have that debris come down and do things like modify the navigation mesh. So now your AI knows uh-oh, there's a big obstruction in the way. I want to navigate around it. Maybe I have the ability to amble over it. The other thing we can do is punch holes into surfaces. So if you're in a building, you punch a hole through a wall, that nav mesh is updated, and now your AI can react to that accordingly and path through it. Performance, of course, always a, uh, a key component. So we want to make it performant. It has to be performant across a wide variety of platforms. So all the way from mobile, up to AAA. Previously, the destruction system did not support mobile platform, uh, but we're gonna remedy that. All right, so then I have two features here that have asterisks on them, persistence and network replication. The asterisks mean that we're not there today, we don't yet have that right now, but that's gonna be forthcoming in the future. So we know that multiplayer is a big deal, of course, and uh, destruction has to support all that. And then finally, developed in-house. So by bringing this in-house and developing our own physics system, we can resource it appropriately, keep modifying, making improvements, and doing bug fixes. Okay, so where we're at. Currently, Chaos is in active development, very active development, as I say. 
So the tools, UI, all of that stuff is subject to change. So you're gonna see like a big ugly stack of buttons. Don't worry about that. It's gonna get a UI styling eventually and it'll be more integrated into the, the UI look. And yeah, it's accessed by enabling a number of Chaos plugins and uh, the mesh editing mode. And of course, performance and stability will improve. All right, so let's talk about the key concepts here. So we're gonna go over best practices, geometry collections, clustering, fracturing, fields, connection graph, cache simulations, and again, Niagara integration. So it's a lot to cover. So construction. So some of these are, you're probably used to as veteran game devs, I know you are. So build with modularity in mind, right? Snap to grid when you can. Have pieces that can basically Lego block together. Where you can make your geometry watertight and have no interpenetrations, that's the type of thing that you want to do, right? Now, I have asterisk there again because there is room for a little bit of fudge factor there. You can be a little bit sloppy, but if you can run your asset through an STL check and it comes up clean, you're going to have a better time. And of course, leverage blueprint. Did everyone see the chaos demo, see video of it or anything like that? Yeah? Okay, so all of those building facades were built with blueprint using construction scripts. So it's a number of static mesh components that all just like auto-generate based on parameters. So you can leverage that stuff to quickly put together scenes. Okay, so as we started developing chaos, we realized that we needed another asset type. And that is the geometry collection. It's a little more than a static mesh, but not quite a skeletal mesh. It has the features of the both, and uh, it's highly optimized. So as I said, you can put together a geometry collection a number of different ways. Right now, I'm just gonna take some simple assets and drop them into the viewport. And I'm just gonna Alt Shift, rotate this around a little bit. Just gonna make a very simple column. So again, you could leverage Blueprint for this, or you can take a collection of assets already in your scene. All right, so we've got the world's most interesting tower here. I'm gonna select all of these objects. And from the content browser, I'm gonna right click. And from the physics section, we have a new asset type that's the geometry collection. So I just hit enter. Now again, ultimately, still early, and what I would like to see happen is as you create a geometry collection live in your viewport, it's gonna swap it out. But today, we're just gonna go ahead and delete all these and replace it. So there we go. All right, so let's save our map. We're good to go. All right, so you may have noticed this new tab over here. This is the mesh editor. And kind of tucked away in the corner here, we have Fracture. There's that big stack of buttons I was talking about. All right, first thing I want to do is flatten the hierarchy. Okay. So this is our geometry collection. Now, it's not obvious here because I used a very simple asset, but what's going on is any static meshes that you collect together will be condensed down into one draw call. So again, highly efficient. All right, and let's take a look at the actual asset in the browser. So very simple implementation at the moment. We have an exterior, exterior material, an interior material, a selection material. You'll see that in action in a moment. But the thing that we want to concern ourselves with right now is the collision type. So we have some primitives for collision. So when we actually fracture this object and we make chunks out of it, there are a few different methods for determining how those things collide in the world. And I'm going to change this to level set. And basically what that does will voxelize each chunk and improve the resolution of the collision. And we can dial that up and down with these parameters here. So if you're finding that your game is running a little slow, you've tried some other performance enhancements, this is one way that you can kind of gate that. The other thing we want to do is turn on mass's density. And we will enter the value for concrete. So we have a nice concrete tower at the moment. And you know, ultimately we'll have a viewport here so you can take a look at your geometry collection and get a feel what it looks like. All right, so let's start blowing that up. So fracturing, we have a number of different fracturing tools. We have your standard Voronoi. We have a couple of different flavors of that, clustered. We have a radial one. Uh, we have planes. Bricks actually is pretty cool. We have a few different methods for uh, adjusting how your bricks are stacked together if you wanted to bring down a brick wall. Some of these may stay, some may go. We may make new ones. And uh, of course, you can use these in combination. But for now, let's take a look at our geometry collection and 
I'm gonna change this. Well, we'll do bounding box to start. We'll just use a standard Voronoi. And I'm gonna break this into about 600 chunks. Like so. We'll select all the components in our geometry collection. And I'm gonna fracture mesh. So this will just take a second to process. And maybe a couple more seconds. This is typically more chunks than I do. Here we go. And when that breaks up, it's gonna look like that. So we're probably all pretty familiar with what a Voronoi system looks like. So we wanna to try to art direct this and make it a little more interesting and kind of mask the fact that we use a standard Voronoi, right? So now we're gonna get into clustering. All right, okay, real quick before we do that, again, here's just further illustration. We've got our building that's been built in a modular fashion out of blueprints. Uh, we hit it one time with a fracture across the whole thing, and then we fractured it again to get more interesting pieces. Oh, right, here's a quick look at some of the different fracturing algorithms that we have. All right, back on the clustering. Okay, so yeah, this is how one dis defines the look and style of the damage, and also your damage levels. So we want to be able to take an object, make it break into large chunks, and then subsequently smaller chunks as things fall apart. And it also helps us define the geometry collections sort of uh, concept of a structural integrity. All right, so let's get started. So first thing, I wanna do a cluster by proximity and uh, we'll cut it down by about half here. And what this is gonna do is gonna take, it's gonna find the biggest chunks and then find all the smallest chunks around it and try to clump them together. Let's go ahead and flatten that hierarchy first. And we'll select all and let's drop down to our level. There we go, that's the one we want. And we'll auto cluster. All right, so not totally obvious what happened there. So let's take a look. And we'll look at our output log. And we wanna look at geometry collection Print detailed statistics. Again, we'll have a nice UI for this, but you can see in this area here, we've got three levels of destruction. We can see that new level out of 300 chunks that we've made. Let's make a few more. So let's change this back to bounding box. And we'll do like, I'm just gonna go by halves. And we'll do it again. And maybe we'll cluster it one more time. You can make as many clusters, many damage levels as you like. So we'll just do like 30, I guess. Actually, no, let's go really low so that we can see some really big chunks. So we'll do like 10. Okay, so now if we start to look at this, you can see how we have our clusters all clumped together there. We've got some interesting shapes no longer looking like standard Voronoi. And we can jump through the different levels and take a look at those. those. Those are looking pretty cool, pretty irregular. And one last time, there we go. We can see the different chunks and how many pieces are in each level. All right. There we go, that's what we just did. Okay, fields. So as we were developing the chaos demo that you saw the other day, it became apparent that you're gonna create a large number of geometry collections. And each of these geometry collections have themselves a large number of parameters that need to be tuned. And going into each one of those and you know fiddling with spinners and what have you is a bit tedious. So we have now what we call the field system. And what the field system allows you to do is define parameters, in this case, physics parameters, based on a volume. And we have a few different types of these. We have what we call an anchor, volume, uh, anchor field, strain field, decay field, and a disable field. So we're still figuring out which fields make the most sense, but all of this is accessible through Blueprint. So if you wanted to come up with your own crazy field that made all sorts of swirling patterns, you could do that too. All right, so let's open our prep level. Here we go. All right, so how am I doing on time? Still have time. All right, good. Let's get rid of these. All right, so if we go ahead and simulate this now, Okay, so what's happening here? We've got our object and it's just falling over into the world, right? Because a couple of different things. 
We haven't set up our damage levels and we haven't set up our anchor fields. So this is a blueprint that we created for the demo that we put together the other day, the chaos demo. I'll just turn that around so it's easy to read. And I'm gonna take our column and we will find our anchor fields. There we go. So now if we simulate, that should say, that'll stay locked into the world. So this is how you set up your buildings and position things and get them to stay tight. All right, so another type of field that we have is the strain field. And I've modified the first person shooter template to spawn a strain field wherever it hits. So you see that little purple sphere there? That's the representation of the force that's being applied. So let's go ahead and hit this. So you can see we're making big chunks and then as those chunks kind of fall down, they're breaking into smaller chunks. So we can take a look at what that strain field looks like real quick. It's fairly simple. It's not a whole lot of blueprint, just setting a bunch of parameters and the direction of the forces that are being applied. Now, you may have noticed like when those pieces came down on the ground and they all kind of laid on top of each other, we had like the classic physics sort of jitter and roll. We can mitigate some of that with a disable field. So I'll drop one of those in there. I'll bring it off the ground a little bit. So any chunks that fall into there will go to sleep pretty much instantly. And for fun, well, I'll tell you what, let's do this first. All right, so let's break this up. There we go. So things have kind of gone to rest a little bit quicker. And we can have some more fun with this. On my blueprint, I'm going to crank up the push magnitude. So one of the forces in the strain field that I'm spawning actually not only imparts force on the geometry collection, but also pushes it out as well. So now we should see some pieces flying. So you can get some pretty dynamic effects. There we go. And we can take these things and shoot them into space. Okay. So yeah, other types of fields, sleep fields, kill fields, you can, it, again, all accessible by blueprint. So you could do a thing like your chunks come down, character looks away, all of those chunks can be removed from the world if you would like them to be. All right, so that's fields. Okay, so let's talk about the connection graph. When we went through the clustering phase, one of the things that was generated under the hood was the connection graph. And what that is, is it's a hierarchy. It shows the relationship of all the different chunks next to each other. It sort of imparts a, um, it gives a sense of structural integrity, right? And so we've got a diagram of kind of what that looks like over here. So the yellow points are anchored and then the blue ones are more free, right? So if we hit a blue chunk with a force, with a field, then it can break free. And then all of its neighbors will know, hey, I'm the next one ready to break, right? Okay, cache simulation. If you see the end of the demo, and I'll play the video at the end of this here. If you see the end of the demo, we have a scene where the entire city block comes down, a giant robot comes up, and all of these buildings come down at once. Now that's not all live, and I put that in air quotes because it's a cache simulation. Now we're probably familiar with the concept of a cache simulation, but you know, in terms of like an Alembic cache or something like that, but that's pretty much like a giant animation of vertexes, right, of vertices. What's different about our cache simulation is we can run our cache simulation, but then if we reach out and interact with any portion of that cache simulation, that portion can become dynamic again. So the illustration we like to paint for that particular uh, use case is you've got a player sort of penned in, a building is coming down on top of them, there's a very large piece of debris coming their way as a cache simulation. The player's gonna get squashed if it lands on him, right? But if he shoots up, if he raises up and shoots that big chunk coming down, that piece that he hits can go dynamic and it can break up even further and spread out. And if you played it 10 different times and hit that thing 10 different ways, it's gonna destroy in 10 different fashions. And of course, you can play these things forwards, backwards, any speed you like, stop them, start them, all that stuff. So you could do things like, you know, you have some sort of gap the player needs to cross. You could destroy an object, and as it's falling down as a geometry cache, the player perhaps has some power that basically pauses the cache. He can use that as a bridge to cross the gap. And then as his enemies chase him over, he can shoot it out, turning it all dynamic and sending them down into the ravine. So lots of gameplay ramifications there. Okay, then finally, I'm gonna hit on Niagara integration again. Uh, Niagara, our super awesome new 
particle system. Um, there's a dedicated communication layer between Niagara and Chaos. So any type of Chaos events that occur, whether it's chunks being spawned or chunks falling apart or chunks, you know, colliding with each other or any other physical surface. I just, I say chunks, but I pretty much mean any other physical surface. Events are sent and uh, accessible by Niagara. And also we have some sense of uh, the physical and material properties of those pieces as well. So if two different materials hit and you want a specific particle reaction, Niagara can handle that. Okay, so before we do q and A, I I do have video today. So if you did not see it yesterday, let's go ahead and run this. And we can see all of the features kind of working together. So if you see those columns there, we have sort of the rebar inside. So that's like two geometry collections. We've got one interior and one exterior. This is that exact scene from that diagram earlier where we had the walkway on the structure. So the player can take out those lower columns and because of the connection graph being updated in real time, all that stuff comes down. Okay, so this is the cache simulation, this part right here. All of this cache simulation, if you shot these chunks, they could become dynamic. All right. So yeah, that is a first look at Chaos and the Destruction System. Again, available in 423, we'll have an early preview of that. And yes, it will ultimately replace the physics system in Unreal Engine. And uh, yeah, look out for that soon. So thank you very much for coming.